I'm excited to be here this evening with Temple board member and financial advisor, Bob Shore. Bob, thank you so much for being with us. Hopefully the technology works a little bit better for us now than it did earlier in the day, because you're gonna be talking about an issue I know is on a lot of people's minds. But before we jump into the topic, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing well. My cup is generally half full and um, it's even a little extra full now because last week I went to Chicago and brought my younger daughter home from Chicago. Her roommate was headed back to uh, her parents' house in Michigan. And so uh, she came home and uh, was working remotely anyway, but didn't want to be all alone there. And so I never thought that two years out of college, she would be back living in our house for a while, but we got lucky. So it's great. I hope that that is only a temporary thing, not not knowing her, but just hoping she launches into the world when all this crazy is said and done. Well, I think she's very busy at work. Her job is one that's uh, going to get busier, not less busy because of what's going on. So sure. yeah. I imagine you are in a field that is certainly getting more busy rather than less based on what's going on. Have you received an uptick in conversation from your clients? What are you hearing? What are they feeling right now? Uh, there's no question that there's been an uptick in conversations with the clients because I've been reaching out much more frequently than normally. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody understands what's happening. Uh, I wouldn't say that I was lucky because 2008 happened, but most people are now able to put things in perspective, even though this is uncharted territory. Most people believe that this too will pass. There's going to be some difficulty along the way, but down the road, everything should be fine. It doesn't look like the mortality rates are high enough that it's gonna cause half the country to die or anything like that, but there probably will be some people who pass, but they're trying to minimize that. The hospitals, I understand, they're mostly cleared out so that when the cases of coronavirus come in, COVID-19, that they're gonna be ready for them. Um, but they're not fully prepared, but they're doing the best they can to get ready. And if we stay at home like we're supposed to, everything should be fine. We, our company did come out with a piece though yesterday that said that they believe it's very important that we isolate as instructed and not come back to work too quickly. Because if we do that, that could exacerbate the problem in terms of health issues, but also in terms of the economy, because it could be a much greater problem down the road. If we fix the problem sooner, less cost than if it comes back later and we, we end up having more and more difficulty. So I hope that everyone does what they're told and avoid interactions as much as, much as possible. And, you know, like you've had other people tell you, uh, make sure you wash your hands as much as possible and uh, do what you're supposed to. It's not a fun time. It is not, you know, everybody is trapped home and just staring at the news, which probably isn't healthy for any of us. But so what is going on in the news? What's your read? What's going on in the financial market? Some may be more plugged into it than others. You mentioned what's going on. So tell us what is going on out there? Well, as it became more clear that there was going to be a problem with people going to work, the the market takes things into account generally before they actually happen, right? So before companies started to lose money, the stock market began to drop. And usually the market overreacts at bad news. Hard to say, we won't be able to tell that until later. We also don't know if the market's bottomed out yet. Again, we won't be able to tell that uh, until down the road. But you know, again, the market is usually ahead of the economy. And in the stock market, it's not based upon how the government does, it's based upon corporate profits in the long run. In the short run, anything can make the market go up or down. But in the long run, if corporate profits continue to rise every year, the price of stocks will rise uh, sooner or later. So what's happening now? Well, we were rolling along and everyone was making money except for maybe the energy companies because the price of natural gas and oil are so low. But other than that, most companies were doing very well. And all of a sudden, people aren't going to work. Uh, except remotely for, for most cases. And so it's caused the expectation to be the corporate profits will drop. And that's why the stock market. And it was down 35 or 40% at what's been the low point so far. The last couple of days it's come back some because of the, uh, the, the Senate has passed. And, and I believe that, that eventually the House and the President will sign the bill to help stimulate the economy in view of what's going on. Uh, 
probably put some money in the pockets of people. So, you know, I, I think that most people believe that over time, everything will be fine. In the short run, we don't know how bad it's going to get. We don't know how bad it's going to get health-wise, and we don't know how bad the economy is going to get. But I'm hopeful that things will get better before too long. But people say to me, well, when's the market going to recover? And I said, well, if I knew that, I wouldn't need any clients because I'd, I'd be rich. But what happens is that the market will recover. We don't know when. You, and people take estimates. I heard one guy say, oh, it's going to be better in 14 months. And somebody said, it'll take two years. No, you know, you can't really tell. But the market will recover over time. Could it be slower this time than the past? Maybe. But I sort of doubt it because once everybody realizes that not everyone's going to die and people start to build up immunity because a lot of people are going to get COVID-19 and they're going to recover. And as that happens, if they can't get it again, you'll see the economy start to recover. But there's no way to give an accurate time frame. But I will say this, the market will probably recover before the economy does. Because again, it's usually ahead of things. So, you know, we don't know if we've hit bottom, but for most people, they have an allocation that's suitable for their risk tolerance and time horizon. Meaning that if you're young, you're investing mostly in the stock market and and you know that if you're putting in money now and all of a sudden the stock market drops, you're buying on sale. That's actually better for you to dollar cost average like that into the market. If you're older and you don't have that much stock market exposure, you didn't lose as much, but you're taking money out and the money you take out can't recover. So most people invest aggressively in the stock market when they're young. And as they age, they, they remove risk from their portfolio, usually by adding bonds to it and sometimes cash and sometimes other investments. Um, and so in as much as the stock market has dropped a good bit. Year to date, the Dow is down 21%. Again, it was down in the mid to high 30s before. So it's only down 21% now. So this week has changed things somewhat, but it could go back down again. But most people offset the risk in the stock market by having bonds in their portfolio. But there's lots of different kinds of bonds and some bonds have done better and some have done worse. But overall, the bond market is up year to date about... Uh, 2.84%, a, a little less than 3% year to date. So it really has offset the losses. So that's why if you had 60% of your portfolio in stocks and 40% in bonds, the stock portion of your por portfolio probably at one point might've been down as much as a third or, or even higher, but the bond portion probably wasn't. And so overall you weren't down as much and every day that the stock market goes up, the amount that you're down is reduced. And last year was a good year. Um, so hopefully, you know, things will recover in the next couple of years, but no one can predict other than to say in the long run, the stock market has always done well. That's what people have made money over long periods of time. And it's actually not that volatile over long periods of time, but short periods of time, it can be much more volatile than the bond market. Sure. You know, we've been riding a bull market for a long time now, and I imagine many people may be, may be overextended in exposure to stocks and have fewer bonds or less diversification than they might have wanted. Now, now seems like the wrong time to be making moves. What would you say to people who are, who are feeling particularly anxious or jumpy right now? Well, first of all, if you have an allocation, and let's use the example of 60% stocks and 40% bonds, and the stock market's been going up and up and up, if you don't rebalance, meaning selling off the winners and buying more of the losers, you could have a situation where instead of being 60% exposed to the stock market, you're now 80% exposed to the stock market, and then you have a situation like this, where the stock market drops that much and you're overexposed, you have a big problem. So it is important to do the things that most financial advisors would advise, and most academic studies would say, is to rebalance on a regular basis, once a year, give or take. Um, and so if you continue to have that, um, you should be fine in terms of your allocation. As far as making a move when the market drops and selling out because you're nervous about it dropping further, there have been numerous academic studies done about that issue, and they all basically say the same thing. Don't do that. Because if you do that, if you have the right allocation in the first place and you make a change when the market's dropped, you're locking in losses and you'll never recover in the long run. Very unlikely that, that, that you would recover. So you'll end up making a decision that might make you help, might make you sleep a little better at night, but it'll be a bad financial decision and you'll end up with less money at the end and less income during retirement. So I'm not saying that somebody shouldn't do that. If they really can't sleep at night and it's going to drive them crazy, then yes, they should sell, but it won't be the right financial move it might be the right move for them emotionally. But if you talk to a professional, they would likely advise you against that. 
Sure. You know, of all of the volatility we're seeing in the market right now, how much is driven by what's happening here domestically in the United States? And how much is a response to global concerns, which also factor in? I think it's largely domestic issues. I mean, everyone's concerned about Italy and now Spain is having lots of problems. Um, you had Chico on earlier today, Chico Harlan, to talk about Italy and it's terrible there, but I, I largely the, the stock market is driven by what's going on in the US. Although there are just as many investments available outside the US, we sort of drive the bus for that sort of thing. Right. Um, Excited to be here with financial advisor and Temple board member, Bob Shore, who is taking my questions right now. And if you have questions you would like to ask him, feel free to use the comment section on the Facebook live feed. And I'm happy to ask him those questions as well. As you're thinking about those, if you're responding with concerns you might have, let me ask a broader open-ended question to you, Bob. If People are fortunate enough to be invested in the market in some capacity if they have a portfolio. What should we and what should we not be doing? You've mentioned a little bit, but just say a little bit more. Well, you had mentioned in an email to me about how often somebody should check their portfolio, which has come up repeatedly. I've had some clients call me and say, I don't look and I'm happier. Other clients would say, I watch it every day and it's driving me crazy. I would never tell someone not to look at their, their portfolio online to see how it's doing. But if it's going to drive you crazier and you know everything's going to be okay in the long run, do you really want to torture yourself? I don't know. I mean, I, I look and sometimes it's painful because I'm aggressively invested in the market. But I think in general, you have to do what works for you. Um, and, and if you're not sure, uh, having more information probably is helpful. But it can be torturous. But, you know, those are also people that, um, that are going to be very happy when the market recovers in a couple of years. That's right. So one of, one of the things I've seen in our portfolios, what should we be doing? What should we not be doing? I wouldn't do any panic selling. If there's a reason that you want to sell something that makes sense, for example, taking some tax losses, um, that might not be a bad time to do it, provided that you buy back into the equity markets fairly soon thereafter. You can't buy the same stock unless you wait 30 days or you lose the benefit of the tax loss, but uh, it's called a wash sale. But, um, but I think that you should stay the course. If you set up a plan, you should stick to the plan. When you, when you institute a financial plan, everyone knows that the stock market doesn't go straight up. So this is one of those times when it's not going up. But, you know, I have had people say to me when the stock market's really high and had, it's had a big run, I want to buy more stock market exposure and when it goes down, they don't want to buy stocks. That's really the opposite of what you should do. Um, so it's emotionally difficult to do the opposite of what you, what you feel in your gut, but sometimes you have to do that. It's like going to the grocery store. Do you want to buy when it's on sale or do you want to buy when the price just went up? You know, it, it's great advice. It just runs counter to people's emotions in the moment, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and this is a time when, you know, you'll run into somebody somewhere and they'll say, well, I got out of the market in January because I knew that something bad was going to happen. Well, you know, maybe they did, but probably they didn't. And even if they did, if you got out in January and you don't know when to get back in, there's a chance that you may end up behind financially anyway. So, you know, if you have a plan, you need to stick to the plan unless there's a very good reason not to. I will also say that if you need money in a year or two, it shouldn't be in the stock market. Even though I really believe that the market's going to recover in, in, in two or three years or maybe less, I don't know. But, you know, now's a great time to invest because it's on sale. But yet at the same time, if you need the money in a year or two years, don't put it in the stock market. Yeah, that's great advice. You know, I've been following a little bit about the upcoming potential stimulus checks going out to Americans. And there seems to be, if you filed your 2019 taxes, it's based on that. If you haven't, it's based on 2018. So there might be some strategy around when you file, even though the IRS deadline has been pushed off, allowing us to do it. What would you say? Are you following that? Is that worth consideration? Or is that a lot of ink spilled over small dollars for most people? Um, 
I have not been closely following. I don't think that it's material for most people, but still it could make a difference for some people. If it does make a difference for you, then you should definitely do the calculations to see what makes most sense. Um, but I, 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 the, the, amount, the, the time to pay has been pushed back. I'm not sure that you don't still have to file on time. Hmm. That is a great point and reminds me to be cautious of my words as I'm wading into areas I simply don't know enough about. What and also, do? what are you doing? I want about? to go back and say that I don't mean to imply that these stimulus checks are small dollars, but I mean the difference between a 2018 and a 2019 fall filing for different individuals. Sorry, I missed your question. What are you doing to cope with the financial volatility? You know, when you and I were talking prior to this, just making sure all of our tech was set up, I, we agreed that now is the right time for somebody in my particular age profile to be, to be dumping everything they could into this. Unfortunately, many don't have the discretionary income to be pouring more cash into the market. Um, but if your retirement horizon is way further out than you might like, there's a fire sale taking place. I would agree. Would you like to know my best piece of advice for those people who are having to work from home right now? Absolutely. It's not really financial, but it is health related. I would station the computer as far away from the kitchen as I possibly could. I was speaking with someone today who said this was a particularly frustrating time in her home because she's treated as a short order cook. The darn kitchen is always open and all of her customers don't tip. <laughs> it's a concern right now, right? As we are trapped within our homes, as we are we're making decisions that have impact both our health and our finances and our longevity that may be, again, driven by short-term emotions rather than long-term highest values. I, I will say that under these circumstances, I think most people would feel comfortable if they're spending less money because they know that their investments, if they have investments, are probably not doing well. So this might be a good time to economize. Obviously, fewer people are going out to dinner. Nobody's sitting inside a restaurant, but I, I don't think that as many people take out as would go sit in a restaurant anyway. So um, if you could economize, this might be a good time. I, I wouldn't necessarily say to hoard cash, but under these circumstances, spending less, I think will make people happier. I would not buy more. Makes perfect sense. Bob, I'm new to this interview game. What haven't I asked you? What other pieces of advice would you have for people who are tuning in live or who may be catching this video in the future? Uh, I think the question that you meant to ask me was, should I put all my money into gold last year? And the answer to that question is, if you had put it in at the beginning of this year, you would be up 7% year to date while well, the markets are down somewhere in the neighborhood of 20%. So you'd be happy. But if you had gold in there the last 10 years, you'd be really sorry because the markets have done way better. But people sometimes ask about gold. In the olden days, they used to say everyone should have 5% of their portfolio in gold. Um, that, that has not been a good decision if, if in, in recent years. But it would have been a good decision if you'd known before the coronavirus. Yeah. Sure, but it, it's also the perfect illustration of what you're saying. This, this tide will eventually lift again. And if you, unless you happen to have a better magic eight ball than the rest of us can, and can time this thing perfectly, you're better staying the course rather than, okay, so you're going to take a short term hit, but you don't want to miss the rise that will follow. That's correct. Wonderful. Bob Shore, financial advisor and Temple board member, I am so grateful for your time. I'm excited we get to join together in just five more minutes for a synagogue board meeting because I'm grateful for your time twice this evening. Thank you for joining us and for giving us some really important words of wisdom during this difficult time. Thank you for presenting all the information you have on the web uh, within the past week or so. It's been terrific and uh, keep it going. You're doing great. I'm honored. Thank you so much.